This week's podcast is proudly sponsored by the Den & Home Wireless Speaker Range. With Den & Home, you can upgrade to high-res wireless sound and stream your favourite music effortlessly throughout your home. Experience impressive acoustic performance based on 110 years of sound innovation with special offers now available at authorised Den & Retailers. Find out more at denon.com forward slash Den & Home. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast streaming live on Wednesday, the 18th of November. And joining me on this edition, Steve Weathers. There isn't enough life on this space... Oh, bollocks, I've got, got that wrong. <laughs> there isn't enough life on this ice cube to fill a space cruiser. Well, at least you've mucked up the intro this week. That's great. Uh, Ed Selly. I can't. It's too big. And Cass Harlow. <laughs> that is why you fail. Uh, hello, welcome back to the AV Forums podcast. If you're watching us live on YouTube, thank you very much. It's good to see you again. And uh, the chat window is open. If you've got anything you want to put in there, uh, go ahead. And uh, if we have time, we'll have a look in there and see what people are up to. And if you listen to us a little bit later, we are available as an audio-only podcast on Spotify and iTunes and other providers. Again, thank you very much for listening. If you want to interact with the team in any way, you can send us an email to podcast.avforums.com. And of course, uh, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching us. Uh, please hit the like button. That is important. And of course, ring the bell and as well as subscribing, obviously. Uh, need to get that sorted out really uh, in order. Uh, but obviously, uh, hit the bell and you'll be told every time we publish a new video. Uh, and if you appreciate our forums, if you appreciate the editorial content and uh, what we uh, determine is a podcast, then of course you can support us. You can become a patron uh, go by going to patreon.com forward slash AV forums, where uh, you can support us sort of Mac automatically for three pounds a month uh, so head over there and sign up you can also give us a donation of any amount that you like as well as a question and uh, if you do make a donation we'll get around to answering that because it pops up on the screen and we can see it and we can answer it and you can do that via streamlabs.com forward slash av forums like i say perfect way to get your question answered and of course all your support it does help us grow av forums improve the site speed and features uh, produce more editorial content like news and reviews and and of course, we can publish more and better videos and maybe one day the ultimate podcast. So thank you very much for your support. So well, at the very uh, least we can teach Steve how to read. <laughs> I was I wasn't reading it, I was doing it on top of my head. That was oh, the well, that's for that that was your first oh, mistake. Well. You're okay. crack. You're getting on in years, Steve. You know, your memory isn't quite what it used to be. <laughs> uh, Martin Gillespie, thank you very much. Two pound donation uh, straight away in there. Thank you, Martin. That is appreciated. Obviously, if you want to ask a question, anything you like, it doesn't really have to be AV. Uh, go ahead and we'll uh, we'll try and answer it a little Although bit. Although it helps yeah. if it is AV. It does, because that's where... Our, Given it's an AV we're, podcast. Yeah. We're supposed to be experts in that field. <laughs> yeah, mm. supposed to be. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you very much for your donation. That is appreciated. Right, what have we been doing this week, Ed? Um, I have been obviously stuck at home, like everyone else. Uh, I've disappeared down the uh, rabbit hole of... Um, uh, long play videos of people playing uh, Amiga computer games on YouTube. Uh, Tom and I have <laughs> lost a surprising amount of time over the last week or so to uh, to that. Um, I've been doing some work for you and other people, and I cooked an enormous, and it has to be said, a, 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 the best uh, beef chili I've ever done in the slow cooker. It was almost as good as the ones I do on the barbecue at the weekend. Uh, so that was something I was left feeling oddly proud about. But other than that, you know, it's the same as it is. I'm uh, responsibly self-isolating by sitting on the sofa and listening to music. So, uh, you know, that's, that, that, that's me in a nutshell. And you said the, the hallway was empty. Is it still empty? Uh, it is. But um, I am doing, uh, I try every year, and I don't know if it ever gets, I want it for Christmas, for the, the, I, in November, I review something where the aim is it goes up in Christmas week, because it's a bit different to the normal stuff. Um, uh, I've got a, a, a review item coming through, uh, two boxes, which were huge, showed up yesterday, and the seven boxes that then power them are turning up tomorrow, so it won't be hallway zero when that happens. Right. Okay. Steve, <laughs> you got you don't go anywhere, yet you got the cold. Yes, yes. I if I suddenly disappear <laughs> or mute, that's because I'm blowing my nose. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold, um, which is annoying because I never leave the house. And when I do, I'm wearing a mask. So how the hell can I, you know, catch anything? Um what have I done this week? Let me think. 
bit of work. I'll tell you what I've done. I, well, I, I was just telling Kaz this before the podcast started, but I finally, having owned it on DVD since the late 90s, I finally got around to watching King of New York because my 4K disc arrived on Monday. So I watched that. That was excellent. Really good film. Amazing cast. And it's a really good disc as well. Uh, and I've been watching a lot of telly. Um, I have to say, I am, uh, what did I pile through? Queen's Gambit. I watched Queen's Gambit. I've talked about it last week. That's really good. Really enjoyed that. Uh, I watched The Liberator um, series after talking about it with Tom last week. So that was really good. And I, uh, I'm still watching um, Prodigal Son. I love Prodigal Son. It's absolute rubbish. But Tom Payne's a good actor. And I'll watch M- M- Michael Sheen read the phone book. So, it's uh, getting a second I- season, isn't it? Oh, good, good. I'm, yeah. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. it I'm a good, it's a good old fashioned. Every week there's a new case, and I just it's like it's like a comfortable pair of slippers. Uh, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> Are you watching MasterChef, Steve? I am watching MasterChef, which okay. is uh, again always enjoyable. Watching the school set. I've got to say, there's been some quite so this the, week, last night's episode, very good. All four of them were excellent. Yeah, I mean, but this is the thing. Unfortunately, the, the, the free son of, of Deloitte skills. that comes to people, you know, I'm a self-taught gastro yeah. pub chef. The, and these are all classically bobbies. trained chefs who've got skills, so they, yeah. can, they can actually butcher a chicken. Plus, they've got uh, time on their hands at the moment. They are keen to win. And I've started watching Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, which I've got to say, because uh, have you watched it all? Yes. Because it's obviously only two episodes are available at the moment on um, yes. doing it once a week after this. But uh, I, I, it's really good. And I'm always amazed at how good Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is, considering the limitations under which it has to operate, i.e. that the movies basically ignore them. They never get any of the big name stars or characters. Yeah, it's, I mean, they it's... were completely screwed over in the same season by the Winter Soldier. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s finished. We're, we're called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What are we supposed to do now? <laughs> <laughs> but they reinvented themselves, and every season has been really good fun. I'm really enjoying this one. Yeah, I, okay. I miss, I'm sad now that it's gone. I was actually sad at the end of it. I nev- never thought it would be that way, but um, but yeah, I think it's like 13 episodes, 12, yes, 13, it's 13 episodes. episodes. And and come, come the end, I wanted, I watched right to the end credits because there's always a stinger. There's yes. no stinger at the end of the last episode, and I was actually double sad i mean there shouldn't be because it ended is there, there's not a stinger right at the end of the credits there's one no, that's... that logo comes up isn't there no i didn't get any stinger at the end of the very last episode. no no yeah, yeah. in fact i don't think i got any credits it just had the logo and that was it but yeah um, but yeah anyway it was um it was sad watching them go um yeah very enjoyable cool. but cool and um, the other thing this week is my copy my Ugh. Um, oh wow! Yes, Dawn of the Dead 4K box sets just turned up. So that's no, it hasn't. It. You can't. Yeah, see it's it. kind of slightly invisible, uh, but on. we can see it. Hold it right next to your uh, head. No. How does it know it's not me? <laughs> hang on. I hold it in front of my face. Does that work? Oh, I can. No, we can just about see the creepy yeah, face. Just on about there, it, right? it, it, well, it, it, actually, it, into space it, is nicely yeah. your bald head and its bald head. It's quite, quite. Yeah, Luke and Luke <laughs> Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> um, Looming six, behind me. Sixty-five quids worth of. of 4k there uh yeah yes um i only i don't know if i would have bothered buying it were it not for the fact there's a massive dearth of content right now so yeah. uh, anyway yeah. that's what i've been up to this week okay well you've kind of um done all the tv stuff that we're going to do at the end so yeah <laughs> well we'll be overrunning by then anyway so it's <laughs> yeah, yeah we always end up having a rush probably anyway. yeah okay Kaz, what have you been up to well it was uh diwali last week yes. so um we had a lot diwali of or diwali don't don't do it. <laughs> D- Diwali. Right. Everyone was pronouncing it as Diwali on the telly. Yeah. Well, it's Diwali I'm conf- here. I'm confused. It's, it's, I, I get a lot of grief from that from, from, from my wife. So it's it's Diwali here. More more of a w than a v. Um, so that was good. We were reading about the legend. We read the kids' book about the legend, and I still don't have a clue. It, it, I think it just boils down to there's a demon, he steals loads of princesses, there's a good guy, he kills the demon, he rescues the princesses. I, wait, I a minute, don't... wait a minute, is this a religious festival or is this a new series on Netflix? Yeah, quite, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit Mario. of both. It's, it's, got the, it's got the makings of a Netflix series, I can see. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. It's also, uh, it's strange, it's uh, kind of everything rolled into one. So it's a bit of a um, an Indian Christmas or the equivalent significance to something like Christmas for us or Thanksgiving for America. They're chucking a virgin birth. Yeah, they do. No, but they make an excuse for spring cleaning. So mm-hmm. goddess of 
wealth and health is going to come visit your house. So you leave a bunch of lanterns out, but you have to clean your house, which I swear is just an excuse to get me doing cleaning around the house. So we spent a lot of time cleaning, making Indian sweets, eating Indian sweets and setting fire to things. Um, it was yes. good. I have to say the um, uh, the the local uh, temple to here, they did a fireworks display and um, yeah, I mean it was seriously impressive um, because I think they're working on the principle that as they you know they are social distancing predicated that it wasn't a good idea for everyone to get into one place they simply let off fireworks big enough to see yeah. from anywhere in Newport Bagman <laughs> from, and from I, I I endorse this process entirely. I mean once you realise that you weren't under artillery bombardment, it was extremely <laughs> impressive. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting time. I was working with some people who were having a an argument because one of one of the developers disappeared for a couple of days and then came back and said it was an Indian festival. And the person complaining at them was like, "Well, we could let me know. I didn't know." And then later in the conversation, it was, "Well, why aren't you going to be around next week?" It was Thanksgiving, don't you know? And it was uh, a little bit of a hypocritical situation going on there, but. Um, off of the course so anyway that's what i've been doing with the kids and in lockdown and working and watching you know king of new york like steve i've got uh total recall which i've watched which looks fantastic i've got cinema paradiso in house i've also got oh, i've got a bunch of other things a whole bunch of movies including jujitsu starring nicholas cage I mean, can you tell from the title and the fact it stars a long-haired Nicolas Cage, it's just going to be one of the best. best. You'll love it, Kaz. You always do like uh, rubbish like that, don't you? It's Sam? just going to be bad. Anyway, I've got that. Okay. We go. uh, it will be fabulous. Hypnotoad has donated five pounds. Thank you very much for that. That is appreciated. Um, I didn't see if you had a question. Um, we'll have a look through. If you have got a question, we will. I come think to Ken's it. donated five quid. Yes, well. that, Ken, that and, was and Ken's magic ability to slip All right, through the cracks. Well, it, it hasn't. Uh, it no, hasn't appeared on the screen. Well, for I, can, me, so. I can see his question. <laughs> I think. Right. Okay. Well, why don't you do that now before we forget, Steve? Uh, I couldn't squeeze into my donation question, but the Panasonic TX seventy seven EZ one thousand and two B OLED is available for Mahai Phonics, and as I said, for eleven thousand five hundred ninety nine pounds. So is the question: Should you buy it? No. Uh, I, why the <laughs> I why is the why is the Panasonic inch... more than twice the price of the other? Yeah, I was going to say you can get a seventy seven has... inch C nine or C ten from LG for half that. Yeah, that, well, that's his question. If you look at the running order, Steve, uh, it's in there. No, I'm not looking at the running order. I'm looking at the he said, feed. He said, if the Sony 77 AG9 OLED costs 3699 and the 77 inch G10 costs 4499 then why on earth does the Panasonic EZ1002 77 inch cost? 11,000. More letters. Absolutely no idea. Many, many letters. I would say that, that it's um, that's uh, at least two year old, that model, if not three year old. Um, so that, yeah, the price will be high because of that. And because 77 inch uh, Panasonic don't do 77 at the minute in their current lineups, whereas Sony and LG oh, do. I think it might be, yes, you're right. I think the, the, the thing that makes it unusual and therefore expensive is it, it, it's a very rare. Large yeah, 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 that's what I said. Yeah. Just like two year old, three year old now. Um, it came out well, a thousand and two. That's at least three year old. He said, So that's your answer, Ken. Uh, Sony and LG have obviously got it's a retro price for the AG9, isn't it? 77 inch AG9. Is that right? Is, 3699. Yeah. Blimey, that's yeah, crazy money, mm -hmm. right? And thanks for your five pounds, Ken. It's uh, it's always appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, right, what do we need to do? Oh, yeah, uh, what have I been doing? Um, well, I got a message from uh, the car dealer that I've been speaking to about ordering the Mark 1 and he basically asked me what colour I want in the spec and they're going to order it now even though the order books aren't open he's going to order it as dealer stock so I have chosen my colour what colour? and spec for the Is it car the fighter so, grey? no good okay no. <laughs> yeah. I've gone what, with what, twister what did you choose? twister orange good nice. it's the right colour it is the right yeah. colour let's face it, it it's never going to be sober is it? So it's, um, it's Twister Orange like Jukes of Hazard, except without the Confederate it, it flag. It doesn't have a Confederate flag on it. And it's actually, it's a richer Slightly orange. Slightly less racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a real poppy orange uh, colour. I mean, it's it's what you would expect from a Skittle colour car. And mm. I, I really like the grey, the fighter jet grey, but 
it's me and I think I would get bored with it really, really quickly. Um, no, I, I like my car in grey, but I like but that's because I like the fact that it blends in and looks like all the other grey versions of its type. It, a grey Mustang is still not, not exactly inconspicuous, and then it loses some of the the you know the the cohesion of the lines and things like that. So I yeah. mean, it looked great in the photos in the sun, but as I cynically pointed out to you, uh, sunshine you get a reasonable amount of it, but it's not a three hundred and sixty five day a year thing in your yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I like the grey, but no. Uh, I've gone with orange, and there's only a couple of options, which was Recaro seats, so I've gone with them, and Y-spoke alloys instead of the five-spokes, I've gone with them as well. So no ideas of price at the minute, so I'm kind of jumping in without knowing that, but you know, I've sold mine, so I need another one, so we'll, we'll wait and see what the, comes of that. Uh, other things I've been doing this week, getting incredibly frustrated with uh, setting up an LG soundbar, which should have been a five-minute job, uh, it turned into a real hassle Stop because... <laughs> Google Home, uh, when you set it away to connect to Wi-Fi, it would come back and connected and then suddenly come up with something went wrong. Um, we cannot access your soundbar through your iPhone. Please switch your privacy settings. When at privacy, everything's set up correctly. It went on and on and on. And yeah. in the end, I ended up using Bluetooth, uh, which was working, which shouldn't have been working because you need to set up a Google Home, first of all. Uh, but then I was able to use the speaker up, the Wi-Fi speaker up, to then set up the soundbar and get around it that way. Uh, but what should have been a five-minute setup, which would be for most people, it's always the way when you're doing something and you're against the clock. And uh, yeah, it just it's got technology. To say, home is quite often the bane of my life. I don't so, like yeah. any of them particularly. I will say weirdly, I agree with you. Google Home and it doesn't really matter whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, it doesn't like phones. If I get a Google Home device in, I always default to using my iPad, and that always works. Don't ask me why that's the case. I have no idea. Um, but I, I don't think that suddenly switching to Google's own phone operating system seems to make a difference, because I can assure you it doesn't. Um, it's, it's really, really weird. And yes, I have to say, I've, I've also had some, some fun and games with that. So um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. It's, it's, not, it, it's one of those operating systems that promises so much, and it doesn't always deliver on that. Now, it's not to say it's a universally doesn't deliver on it but on occasions i found it it doesn't necessarily meet the the the, the, the promise of what what's yeah. on, on what, the, on what the i sheet. found odd was the fact that i had to use google home to set it up i i would no, that's expect... pretty much standard it's yeah, a google I... assistant right. google okay. yeah. chromecast um soundbar or speaker that would be the norm and most of the time you know it's flawless you just you know, straight in it sets the wife up and you think oh brilliant but every now and then you're looking at those bloody colored cubes and yeah, triangles cubes bouncing around, around and nothing happens and I, they... so i hate ha have huge problems with my stadia if i leave it for more than a week when i turn it on and try and connect uh it, it doesn't connect and it doesn't recognize it and it does a really stupid thing when setting up it, it can read the number off my phone. So it's obviously reading the contact from my phone and it tries to connect and then it says your phone and your um, Chromecast so aren't on the same Wi-Fi. <laughs> so please connect them. And I'm yeah. thinking, yeah, yeah, how I'll did you read the number too. off my phone two seconds ago? So but, but what, what the annoying thing for me was, Kaz, that it plays a sound just before you enter your Wi-Fi password. Yeah. And it yeah. says, can, can you hear this sound on the sound bar? Well, yes, I can. So... What happened between saying yes there and putting in my wife? Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. To Chaos. it not working again. It's like, yeah. yeah. There's been some yelling and screaming and swearing. Oh, there was. Yeah. There was. Yeah, come on, that, yeah. that, that's part. I don't, I don't know about you. you. You guys do some heavy stuff as well. Some competitive yelling is part and parcel of, uh, of yeah. getting things in and out of the box. There's an amplifier review for later on this month where um, even with two people, I mean, we made world's strongest man noises getting that in and out. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Ut utterly preposterous. Yeah. Um, I, I just need the police to turn up at the door because of domestic. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's only me in the house. Yeah. I'm only arguing. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I've been doing this week because obviously lockdown and, and all the rest of it. And we're going to talk about uh, other stuff that I've been doing this week when we get to uh, the hardware section. And so, on. so before we do that, there's another um, question as well for you. There is, yes. I've just noticed that. So Craig o has donated twenty pounds. Oh, Craig, Sorry, thank, thank you very you. much. That's uh, that really is appreciated. Evening, gents. I'm after a forty-three inch TV for the NWW TV bed. I am. I am assuming that that's 
a new TV for the bedroom. No, no, no. It's the bed, you know, where it actually comes out the foot of the bed. Is that what it is? Mm, I think so. And probably why he needs a 43-inch TV. It needs to be be a specific size, otherwise it won't won't fit. It comes out of the bed. It comes out of the foot post of the bed. When you're looking for that aesthetic where it doesn't just look like you lie there in your vest and pants watching television. Yeah, otherwise it's like my bedroom where there's a bloody 55-inch OLED. It just reminds me of um, Last Boy Scout where he's talking to the Wayans guy about the cost of his trousers and he's like how much they cost he goes these are thousand dollar pants and he goes what are they do they have a tv in them so, well shall we yeah. essentially yeah. It, it, it's an aesthetic choice that very few of us are grown up enough to make well, it looks cool when it comes yeah. the bottom. <laughs> it um, so to answer your question i haven't looked at any 43 inch tvs uh this year we don't, generally don't look at that sector of the market because the price levels are usually around about four to five hundred pounds and the thing is that we've reviewed TVs like that at that price point. People don't read, read reviews at that there price point. Um, they walk in yeah, and uh, and usually buy a TV. So my uh, friend recently got in touch with me. He wanted a 49-inch set, um, and he only had a £600 budget. And after doing a lot of research, I would generally suggest that you look at anything by Sony at that price point because it's usually – good quality and you usually get some decent um, features um, Android TVs come on a long way just make sure uh, the processors up to inside they're usually quad core so if it's quad core and it's got Android TV it's usually quite good and you can't go wrong with Sony when it comes to their custom mode um, across the TVs it's normally good quality just be prepared that uh, at 43 inch you ain't going to get a, a full array local dimming backlight it will be edge lit at that price point and it does have some some drawbacks but if it's just for the bottom of the bed you're not really doing any critical viewing um, at that point you just want a, a decent picture then I suggest any from Sony uh, Samsung are pretty strong at that price point as well I, I'd recommend Samsung um, just because you're going to get a full suite of streaming services built into your TV yes yeah. the, the only thing I would say is that the, 40, the, the ones that I have looked at at the cheaper end of the market, um, not as accurate out of the box as, as the custom mode would be on the So it depends what you're after. If you just want after a nice punchy picture, then you can look at Samsung's as well. Um, I don't know if Panasonic are still in that market. They did hand over their TVs to Vestal at that price point. So um, I'm not sure if they still do that. Yeah, I think I'd stick with Sony or Samsung at that screen yeah. size. It's yeah. going to be an LCD basically because you don't do OLEDs that small. Yeah. Um, but yeah, either. But for me, I'd say Samsung just because, you know, if you want access to everything, it's at you know, the bottom of your bed and you've got Now TV and you've got uh, Disney Plus and, and um, Apple TV Plus and, you know, YouTube and Amazon and Netflix, the, the works then it's just nice and easy. Yeah. Hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, so thank you very much, Craig. But I don't really know exactly what model. <laughs> I don't know any of the models. At that are, you, like I I say, are you something thousand? It definitely are. You yeah. When, when my friend asked me that question, uh, obviously I wanted to help him out. And, and a lot of this, a lot of it was new to me. So I, um, I noticed that I've just seen the, uh, the AV <laughs> forums answer has cropped up. Step one, get a yeah, bigger, bigger bed. bigger bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Someone's pointed out Philips are quite good at that price point. You might not want Ambulite, though, at the bottom of your bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the new Ambulite actually does a wake-up feature, Steve. Oh, um, so it, Do you know what? I'm not going to swear to it. I'd, it may be seamless and silent, but I imagine the TV whirring out of the bottom of your bed we'll probably, probably wake, you wake you up before it lit up. <laughs> if, just throwing it out there. Verify the cat. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, uh, thanks very much, uh, Craig, for your donation. I hope that's helped, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've seen the question asked a couple of times this week on the forums, why don't we review things at certain price points? It's either because uh, we can't get hold of them for review because uh, they're not available as samples, or usually we have reviewed them um, and there's been no interest. Um, yeah. And and we've decided not to not to continue with that because there's been no interest. I mean, we've got a finite number of slots. Um, I mean, for, from from the hi-fi perspective, where where I do my work, it's a balancing act of things. I try and cover a good spread of avo- affordable things, uh, some new technology, interesting things, and then extremely mad things that you enjoy reading about while skiving on the office toilet as and when we're allowed back into the office i mean it's just just a case of trying to trying to keep the, that that balance of things going that's yep. why it is yep absolutely um so we're going to come on and discuss that just in a bit when we do uh, editor's choice for home av but before that kanzi is going to give us the current competitions sure 
Well, we've got. Uh, is it going to take you about were... half an hour just looking? It is. We got a lot. Have we got running? <laughs> and I've got a. I think I've got another half a dozen to go live for Monday. So <laughs> oh, we're gonna we're gonna have a spunky <laughs> run to Christmas. Yeah, we got King of New York 4K. So both me and Steve love love that nice. disc. A fantastic yeah. disc. Anyone on the fence enter the competition? You'll lose because I've entered it and I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a complete finished copy, so that'll be mine. That closes 18th of December. <laughs> And then win a copy of Evil Dead on 4K. That closes 10th of December. Um, Westworld Season 3, The New World on 4K. That looks great. And I really like the season. I know uh, there's been a lot of feedback, a lot of naysayers on it. but I, I, I only managed to get to Episode 3, but that was just because I ran out of time. Um, I'd be interested in seeing it. Yeah, I love I loved the new season. But that, anyway, check it out. Closes 12th of December and looks great in 4K as opposed to... Does look 720 now TV. Um, when a sharp HT SBW800 Dolby Atmos soundbar with wireless subwoofer worth That's 499. That closes 15th of December. I put them in the right order, by the way. So then I put them in the wrong order. And yes, then I put yeah, them in the you, right order. No, no you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Mercifully, okay. Google Documents does 150 control Zs. You just go to the right hand side and click last version. Oh, I didn't do that. I just pressed Control Z until it all looked right again. <laughs> Win a copy of Children of June on Blu-ray closes fifth of December. Copy of Lady Killers on four K that closes fifth of December. Uh, Win Criterion's November titles on Blu-ray. That's Irishman, Five Easy Pieces, and Girlfriends that closes third of December. Lionsgate's cult classics Blu-ray bundle, which is Last Exit to Brooklyn, Snowpiercer, Reservoir Dogs, American Psycho. And Requiem for a Dream, that closes 26th of November. Uh, the Crown Season 3 on Blu-ray closes 24th of November. Hindenburg, HMV exclusive Blu-ray steelbook, 20th of November. Philips Fidelio X3 headphones worth 299 That closes 1st of December. Excellent. And price. the last Back to the Future Ultimate Trilogy on 4K, that closes 20th, couple of days. Get to it. All competitions open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. And we've got a few Patreon exclusives open. You can win White Snake on Blu-ray. That closes 25th of November. Ghostbusters 1 and 2 on 4K Ultra HD. That closes 20th of November. Back to Future on HMV exclusive 4K Blu-ray Steelbook. That's the one with the Japanese artwork. That closes 4th of December. We got a couple of podcast exclusives. Tremors Shrieker Island, which you could have picked up the question for last week. That's 21st of November. And the hard way on HMV exclusive Blu-ray Steelbook uh, closes 26th of November. The question for that is at the end of the comp- of the podcast. Um, previous winners: Norco won a copy of King of Staten Island on Blu-ray, and Logi Andrew won a copy of Yield to the Night on Blu-ray. There you go. Uh, perfect, almost perfect. Thirty minutes there. Thank you very much. Just very uh, quickly, a question's popped up about international competitions. Most competitions are limited to the UK as much as anything because they're organised with UK bodies and it's about the promotion of that item within the UK. It's not to say it's impossible to do an international prize, but it would be have to be dependent on a company that handled all of its stuff from a, essentially from a single base and was happy that it was there, there was a chance that would have to be shipped somewhere very interesting indeed because yeah. the whole world means the whole world but um it's there's, there's all impossible. sorts as well there's there's tax issues there's yeah. uh, rules and licensing and there's lots of things uh, and that's usually the reason why uh you know the territory is uh, specifically mentioned right like i say perfect 30 minutes there uh, let's go hardware next Right, um, where are we going to do? There's three things that we could go with hardware. Um, I think we're going to go to uh, Ed. Do you need to go and do... No, no, I'll do this first, then I'll give him an extra couple of minutes. Yelling okay. at his iPad, he's happy. So. <laughs> right, so you've been looking at some uh, Bowers & Wilkins speakers. What are they? How good were they? How much were they? Right, they are the 705 signature. Uh, they are £2,600. Um, and they are outstanding. Uh, the 705, Bowers & Wilkins is one of those infuriating companies where the larger the number, the smaller the speaker. 
you know, just, just to keep you on your toes. So we did the 702 signature, which is a large floor stander, and this is a two-way stand mount. Now, the 702 signature is a very, very good loudspeaker. This is a sensational one, which is why it wears that best-in-class badge. Um, essentially, the modifications that turn the, the 700s into the signatures are about uh changes more than anything else to the crossover and then putting them in that glorious finish in terms of what it's done to them the 702 is a speaker i've never actually spent a huge amount of time with but you know it was it's a perfectly competitive product and the signature changes make it better the 705 is an outstanding speaker and the signature changes have that same lift in terms of what happens to it uh, the result is, well, it's the, it is in the absence of listening to the Dynaudio Special 40 again, and there's some ambiguity because it's changed since I reviewed it back in 2018, um, but it's unclear whether that's a cosmetic or a performative change, and Dynaudio are maddeningly vague about that. It would certainly be an interesting fight between these two products. I thought this is outstanding. It does the absolute holy balance of sounding extremely accurate tonally it's it's very even um excellent frequency response good dispersion all of the technical things and then it does that with a massive helping of joy um it's genuinely lovely to spend time listening to it's obviously a very attractive thing um someone did point out that there is a white line across all the photos i'm afraid that's the back of the studio reflecting back onto the speaker um i tried shooting it with the fascia of the studio down but that creates um a totally different ripple effect so my apologies on that um this is it's just one of those products that just takes what is a fundamentally sound baseline product and makes it sensationally good i thoroughly enjoyed listening to them they have the other benefit as well that they're not i wouldn't suggest that they're going to flatter poor equipment but they're not terribly hard to drive they're not hugely demanding um they are relatively unfussy about how you place them they've got two-piece foam bungs which means that even if they are close up to a wall you've got uh, a degree of choice and flexibility in how you can um uh, you know uh, control the uh, the flow of air through the port it's a viceless product uh people asked in the comments thread how does this compare to the 805 uh you know the smallest member of the flagship range that's getting on for twice as expensive so half as uh, as much again um obviously this speaker isn't as good as that but it does give you a flavor of what the 805 is capable of i loved every minute of spending time with these speakers other than taking photos of them. Uh, they are um, a, a genuine reminder in the same way that the 702 signature was, that when Bose and Wilkins isn't playing about with wireless technologies and, and, and other bits and bobs, when they just settle down to make a great pair of stereo loudspeakers, they can do some extraordinary things. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with them. If you are shopping for speakers in this price point, um, they are indisputably at the i don't think there's anything i'd choose under three thousand pounds in lieu of these um that's would be my my feedback on that and i'd also say and i've mentioned this in the review unless you've got a very big room to fill modern stand mounts on a decent stand give you a controlled low frequency response which i i in some ways, I had to rein the, the 702 signature back to dial into the room correctly. I didn't have to do that with these, and they they responded in kind. They were, you know, extremely enjoyable to listen to. Um, and really, there aren't many downsides to that. I uh, I, I, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that. Someone's mentioned, uh, are you worried about the bits on the top rolling off? You, I'm not, but you have to read the manual or the promo bump the tweeter on top is not rigidly mounted to the speaker so when you get them out of the box and they're sort of wobbly you think well this is a bit <laughs> a bit buckshy but no um that's how they're designed to be um and once you come to terms with that that's that that's all well and good so no i i don't have anything bad to say about these speakers i enjoyed listening to them from the, from the moment they turned up um, I put them back in the box with some reluctance to send them back to swap for something else from the same PR company. Um, and yeah, uh, as you might imagine, when, when it's my turn to talk about the uh, the editor's choice for my section, they're, they're probably going to feature in that as well. 
will okay. say Ed, that um sorry phil just quickly um that obviously if you haven't got the kind of money that these cost uh the new 600 series s2 anniversary editions which mm. do incorporate certain features from the 700 series are are, um, are fantastic speakers uh for the money they're as, as a sort of entry level point to bmw's range they are and always have been a great great i've speakers. heard nothing but good things about those uh, i've had the 603s in uh which were a lot bigger than i was expecting <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot more, a lot heavier than I realised. Um, but they they sounded fantastic. Uh, and I had, I think someone, was, I think someone asked about six oh sixes. I didn't have the six oh sixes, but I had the six oh sevens as surrounds uh, and the and the centre speaker. And and that was a, a fantastic five point one system. Um, that uh, if you if you don't have the kind of money for a seven hundred series, you know, remains cracking value for money uh, and, and a really good speaker package. that is perhaps i suppose it's not a downside of the 705 it's it's a, a decision that bows and wilkins has taken if you are an av fan there is no signature center speaker and apparently no plans for one this is stereo only you can't have a signature home theater package which is a shame in some ways but a reflection of the, of, of the thing and also you have to buy them in pairs head they do, yes, you'd have to do a joint purchase with someone else if you just wanted 3705s across <laughs> the front. That's a good idea, actually. Um, but, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's um, uh, and, and someone has pointed out, Stan Mountfield has never been as great as this. We've got the LS50 Meta is, is in, in the works at the moment. That's... Um, that's been a very, very interesting review. It, it's, a, it's a great speaker there's a but and there's a but that will be covered in, in in due course because um i've seen certain things written which having now spent some time with them i don't necessarily entirely agree with it's a great speaker but there's a caveat that doesn't seem to be being picked up yet okay so all that to look forward to grand right we've got another list to go through here uh so we're going to do our editor's choice awards for home av and steve did the majority of these products i did one or two here or there but it's mainly Steve's field because uh, he's our sound bar reviewer and uh, other things. So uh, we're not going to spend too long on this because obviously the article is up on the site. It. You can go and read it. <laughs> make, uh, make a note of the first paragraph. Uh, try not to skip the first paragraph because it gives you why uh, and ifs and, and why we pick certain things and, and, and so on. So basically it's, it's what we've tested in the last 12 months. We normally do our awards. Can I just November. specify that's from November to November? November I was just going to say November to November. To November. <laughs> um, we we generally uh, most publications do their awards in November. Um, it's just the way that, that it seems to be a perfect end to the year because you don't get any product launches um, after IFA. Really, I mean IFA is the last sort of real push for products. So by the time you hit November, you've seen most of the stuff. It's been a strange year because we haven't had all the products in that we'd like to cover Steve, uh, obviously with COVID and everything else. I mean, the beginning of the year, which is normally when we do a lot of the audio stuff before the TVs come online. Again, every, everything tended to turn up all at the same time, didn't it? So, Yeah, the one area where we haven't done a lot of this year that we would have done more of last year, and, and I'm aware of this, people have pointed it out as well, and it's a valid point, but it's not our fault, is we haven't seen any budget AVRs. Yeah. Um, the closest, you know, the cheapest AVR we've seen, you know, is 1500 quid. So um, nothing in the sub 1000 pound bracket. Normally we would see a couple in that price point, yeah. but this yeah. year we haven't. Um, so if you're wondering why isn't there a cheap AVR in there, it's just because we haven't seen any. Uh, and yeah. we can only, you know, put things we've actually reviewed in the list. So uh, yeah, that's the problem. Right. So quickly, let's go through soundbars first, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, so under 600 quid, um, just under 600 pounds as it stands. Uh, although I do understand this is quite hard to get hold of. Um, but the Vizio SB36512 F6, uh, I thought was an absolutely cracking little little package with uh, a soundbar at the front, a subwoofer and a pair of wired rear speakers. So it is wired, which is an ideal, I guess, for a lot of people, but it doesn't mean you don't get dropouts. Um, but it delivered a fantastic performance and genuine immersion because it had actually had... Um, upward firing drivers in the front uh, and it had genuine surround so it really did actually immerse you now given that this is hard to get hold of if you're looking for an alternative i did suggest to someone on the thread that maybe the sony ht x 700 is worth looking at um, it supports atmos and dtsx but it does it using psychoacoustic processing not actual upward firing drivers so it's not as immersive as the vizio is um, 
if you've got a bit more money to spend though i would definitely look at the jbl bar 9.1 this is an absolutely cracking product with uh rechargeable and detachable surround speakers you take off the edge the sides of the main soundbar pop them at the back they're wireless it's it's got genuine it's got they've got upward fine drivers built into the rears as well so you get genuine 5.1.4 system um that supports atmos and dtsx and it's absolutely superb for the money really and good did, product and have, I, am i uh, misremembering this or, or was there a, a phillips product that was similar to this they did the this a few uh, about yeah, four or was. five years ago they were the first ones to do it um uh, and it's a great idea you know you, you basically charge them up and then put them in the back when you need them um and uh and obviously they're wireless so there's no wires involved it's it's quite a clever idea and this was yeah this is a great product and uh, i think you can probably currently pick it up uh, from what i've seen there's some quite good prices knocking around too so if you're in the market for a soundbar definitely want to consider this uh if you've got a bit more money to spend between a thousand and one and a half grand lg's sn11 rg if you can get it set up it's a really good <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good soundbar 7.1.4 channel system with actual, you know, upward firing drivers, uh, wireless surrounds, and Atmos and DTSX support. Yeah. The, 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 there is a few uh, little things with it that, that I, I hadn't picked up on in your review, such as you can't adjust the surround speakers individually. Yeah, it's only it's like a global uh, adjustment for volume and that kind of thing. So you really need to think you about placement. The, yeah, you, you do the rears together, and then basically the, the paired speakers you adjust. This is the same with um, the Samsung as well. Actually, it's, it's a slight weakness in both of them, is that um, uh, uh, you can't individually uh, adjust the levels of each speaker. So if your room is not symmetrical, that can be an issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a cracking speaker. I, I, hadn't, I haven't seen a soundbar in a couple of years for review because obviously you tend to do all these, Steve. Um, they've come a long way in the last couple of years, a very, very, very long way. Yeah. What you can Impressive. get from a soundbar in terms of immersion now, I think. Um, yeah. you know, uh, there certainly was a time when you said, if you want a proper surround system, you need to go for separates and an AVR. I don't necessarily think that's the case anymore. I think you can get a performance that's convenient, sometimes cheaper, depending on what you're buying. And um, and a lot you know a lot a lot uh, easier to install <laughs> than a full AVR system. But it's like it's like yeah. the all-in-one revolution that Two Channels been having. You know, the argument for separates becomes more and more specialist, and the one-stop solutions are just devastatingly capable. So. Yeah. Well, before we came on, we were talking iPhones and cameras, um, and you know, again, I I haven't used my DSLR in about a year for taking out and taking photos. I use my iPhone. It's so, so yeah, convenient, isn't it? Con convenience. <laughs> And absolutely, and sound, and it's good. sound quality is really good as well. Sound quality is excellent on it. So uh, that's the LG. And then if you want, if you've got a bit more to spend, um, the Samsung HWQ950T uh, is a 9.1.4 channel system. It supports Atmos and DTSX. It passes both Dolby Vision and HDR10+. It pretty much ticks all the boxes. It's, it's a cracking package. Um, and yeah, that would be my, that's sort of my top of the line soundbar. So it's the what's the Samsung got over the LG then, Steve? What separates them? Uh, I think uh, the actual performance is better on the Samsung uh, in terms of, um, particularly in terms of its base management. I think the uh, fact it passes Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus is a convenient factor if you've got, say, a, a Panasonic TV and player. And um, it's it's just a little bit better. And obviously, it's got 9.1.4. And, and you know, it actually does work. The side firing angle drivers do bounce off the side walls and create. A greater sense of immersion so it's, there's not a lot in it it's, you know it's, it's a thousand it's, it's 100 quid more sorry for um for the samson but i just think it's got a slight edge over the um over the lg uh samson's been doing the the, more, the immersive soundbar trick for a long but i mean the lg is the first time they've done it this year previously they didn't have um full immersion they just had uh you know a soundbar and, and, a, and a and a sub so i think the uh, the, the samson just got there's not a lot in it i mean if you like i said if you if you if you got if you're a bit you know if you're looking for something a bit cheaper then then the LG is definitely worth considering. Both of them are excellent. Is it the uh, one that delivered. you gave best immersive audio as well for? Yes, well that and that's yeah. yeah so won two awards on that. Yeah. I can uh, I can save some time by doing that now. Yes, I think it, as, as in a sense as, as far as immersion goes, um, I think this is the most immersive soundbar you can currently buy. You know, people talk about things like the Sennheiser. That's just bouncing stuff off the walls and the ceilings. It's not the same. Unless you've got speakers behind you, you're not going to get genuine immersion. And this has got speakers behind you. It's got rear overheads and it's got um, side and angled 
um, so it's got width and side firing drivers and it really does completely immerse you in a sound field. And it looks like it's got 914 over the LG714. Yes, yeah. So, so basically the uh, the Samsung has side, side firing, firing out width to give you more width at the front of the room. But it's also got these angled speakers that fire to the side walls and bounce off to give you a sort of a, a side speaker effect, which generally does work. So um, yeah, you, you get some nice, when things are moving from front to back, say in terms of steering of effects, you know, it, it's a smoother transition and uh, it really does immerse you very effectively. I think that's, that's the one I want next. Because I've got, <laughs> You've I've got, got the uh, 950, haven't you? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. I Again, do. not in no, it's day, tremendous. cracking. It's, it is <laughs> tremendous. I'm just, I'm just quite like. This is getting this. into the spirit of AV forum if I want to one that's a bit better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, <laughs> I, I'm fine with it. I'm just saying, if there happens to be one, no, you know, no, Kevin, I'm, not I'm not. I'm not judging you. I'm not. I, I, it, it, I'm. I'm. I'm always in the pursuit of going one more. So, yeah. you know. I, but I need really one expensive louder. leads, Ed. If you can get me some expensive leads, I can, I'm, mate. If you want expensive leads, you can. I can do you. I can do you th like Rutger Hauer things that you yeah. wouldn't believe. You want a toe? <laughs> I can get you a toe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, where was I? Oh yeah, lifestyle soundbar. So that's gone to the Samsung HW S60T. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's, um, no, it's an attractive soundbar. And frankly, that's what matters when you're talking about lifestyle. You know, we'll sit at the front of the room and look really nice. It'll match the decor, but it also sounds really good too. It's obviously covered in Kvadrat, which I wish I had shares in because every product I'm is straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you can say it correctly because I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> uh, and then for gaming soundbar, and this is our current competition prize as well, is the Sharp HTS BW800, uh, which again is 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 a cracking. It's competitively priced. You can get it for four hundred and forty quid, around about then. Uh, it's uh, it's actually got a proper display on the front, which is something. If I have one major complaint about the Samsung soundbar, the uh, 950, is they stuck, they've stuck the display on the top. So you can't see it when you sat down. God knows why they did that. Um, but this, this, the Sharp's got a proper display. You can easily read from distance. It's got a nice, big, powerful sub. It supports, it doesn't support uh, DTSX, but supports Atmos, which from a gamer perspective is the more important thing because I don't think there are any DTSX games. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a good, uh, relatively inexpensive way of beefing up your sound quality, giving you more immersion. Um, and Atmos support um, for um, for gaming with your with your with your gaming TV. So that's our gaming choice. And then um, right onto the subs. So um, best value sub of the ones that I've seen. Obviously, I'm limited to what I've actually reviewed. But in the last year, I, my, my award goes to the SVS SB2000 Pro, which is 899 quid. But it's a really cracking little sealed sub. Um, goes deep, very responsive, and it's got the um, the uh, um, Bluetooth app which is a really useful feature for setting up the sub without having to go off your ass and fill around with the back of you. You can sit at the sweet spot yeah. and you can fine tune it. And that's actually a massive benefit when you're setting up a sub because anyone who's ever had to fiddle around, changing the volume a little bit, going back, sit down and going back, you don't you have to do any of that. You can do it all from a remote control. And I'll tell you what, it's an absolute godsend when you're setting up subs. So that's my um, best value subwoofer. And then, Best subwoofer solution. So th this is a bit of a, a, a niche market. And it's certainly something that's, well, I think, unique to SVS. But uh, I know a couple of people like Ken, big fans of this. The SVS PC2000, this is a cylindrical 2000 Pro subwoofer. So essentially the same features as the SB2000 um, Pro, but this is cylindrical. So you get a more a smaller footprint compared to the, the ported version. But you still get some really deep bass, and, and you can pop it in the corner of the room, and it can. You know, I'm not going to say it's it's um, unobtrusive because it's not exactly small. <laughs> but, Steve, uh, have you got concrete floors? Uh, it's it is quite solid. The floor, yeah, yeah. Because I used to own one of these uh, cylinder subwoofers. I, I imported it. This was before SVS was mm. uh, available in the UK through a distributor, and. Um, I think it cost me about 800 quid imported all the taxis and stuff paid and it didn't work in my room because my room is upstairs with a, a vaulted floor and of course it's a downward firing subwoofer yeah. and most of the energy <laughs> was going, going through downstairs, downstairs. Um, knock, <laughs> knocking, the glass, <laughs> knocking the glasses off the shelves in the opticians downstairs but i wasn't here <laughs> anything upstairs so yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. That is the one downside because it does is downward firing. So no, you it's not, there's, there's, there's one other downside as well, uh, which it's not SES's fault, but I'm going to point it out. I've never been more embarrassed to return 
a review product than I have when I reviewed one of these because <laughs> the I, cats have, yes, near I it. have spent my uh, spent the time <laughs> teaching the cats to scratch a vertical cylindrical <laughs> object instead of my sofas when presented with a vertical cylindrical object that wasn't a sofa they went right and they went to town on it <laughs> um and yeah it's unfortunate but unfortunately uh you, you know cats are pretty simple creatures and they just go yeah it's a scratching post and they will absolutely <laughs> batter it i'm afraid it's well made and it won't damage it won't damage the internals but cosmetically it will suffer uh so if you are a cat owner please just pay attention to that <laughs> okay yeah. Okay. And uh, the next sub you're going to talk about, it's, uh, it's a new brand in the UK, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Power Sound Audio may not be a familiar name, uh, but I can guarantee you the people involved in it will be because they are some of the guys from SVS. Um, and th- uh, what, made, what it reminded me of was old school SVS, because a lot of the more recent, I mean, they're, they're making some cracking stuff subwoofers at the moment svs but they're a lot more refined than they used to be they seem they've lost some of that blunt force trauma that made them so pleasurable to use in the past um this power sound audio the s1512 uh, big 15 inch driver and uh yeah it, it delivers some seriously solid bass uh, and it definitely reminded me of, of, of the older svs subs which can be a little unruly at times but in a good way um, and so as a home cinema subwoofer, this is a, I mean, it's, it's 1500 quid, but you're getting a lot of power and a lot of depth and a, a really responsive and powerful and, uh, and, um, you know, it's not, it's not pretty, <laughs> I'm <gonna be> honest, <laughs> this is not a pretty subwoofer, but in a home cinema, you don't care. You stick it in a, in a corner of a dark room. So, you know, it, it's, it's going to, it's going to do the job and, and it, yeah, it's a really, really good sub. I was impressed by this. And um, like I say, like you say, Phil, it's a relatively new name to this, to our market. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a US subwoofer and it's everything you would expect from a US subwoofer. <laughs> yeah, they don't do subtle, do they? Blunt force. Nah, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Uh, and then finally, uh, Rel, uh, the S812. Um, there's two here. There's, there's the S8812 the and the S510. But we're talking about the high-end subs. So I've gone for the S812, which is both are good, but this is the 12-inch driver with a 12-inch downward firing passive radiator, uh, 800 watts of next-gen 5 amplification. Gorgeous design, very conveniently and useful handles on the sides for moving it around. It sits on rails, which again makes it a lot easier to install. Uh, it's a beautifully made subwoofer. It, it, it performs fantastically, um, really responsive, really deep bass. Um, it's, it's a really nice uh, if you got a couple of them in, I think I did have two, either two of these or it was two of the fives. But um, yeah, they're, 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 I mean, you can um, stack them as well. I mean, depending on what your budget is, but uh, you can put three three together on top of each other if you want. Line um, array. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, a cracking sub. And um, and for my, my choice for high-end subwoofer of the last 12 months. So moving on to home cinema speakers, the Polk Signature E is my best value home cinema speaker of the uh, of the year. This uh, these speakers look pretty um, traditional considering they're made by Polk, uh, apart from the center speaker, which is very Polk like with um, six uh, drivers and a tweeter in the middle. But otherwise, they're, they're relatively uh, normal looking, nicely made. Great performers, um, really good value for money. I mean, the system that I tested cost 1,600 quid, but that was for, uh, I think, a 5.1 system. So, you know, that's not that's not bad value. My, probably the weak spot for me would be the the sub itself that they make that uh, that came with the system, H, the H, HTS-12. Uh, not that great. Could go a bit deeper. I, I would be more inclined to buy the speakers and then bring in a sub from someone like SVS, for example, would deliver a much better performance um, uh, and a you know, and complement these speakers very well but they are very nicely designed um great performing speaker and competitively priced um moving up the line a little bit you've got the acoustic energy a 300 so this is under three grand um again uh beautifully made sound fantastic um great with music as well as with movies but um you know from a home cinema perspective they've got uh, um dedicated center speaker uh, and a nice range including floor standers and stand mounts and uh, yeah, really dynamic, really fun. Uh, I often find acoustic energy can be a, a really, a really enjoyable speaker, and these delivered uh, a fun factor in, in spades. And, and I really, uh, really enjoyed these. And, and I think they're uh, they're beautifully, like I say, beautifully made. 
Competitively priced, I mean, the system I tested was only two and a half grand. So again, that's not a lot for a 5.1 system, including floor standards. So uh, that's a great system. And then uh, the next range up, so 3,000 to 5,000, I went for the MK Sound LCR 750s. Um, I think you used to have a pair of these, didn't you? Is I used to own oh, I, I, no, I these uh, back in 2004. I had a yeah. set of these. So these uh these these incorporate the same drivers that are used in the S one fifties, which I've got um, in my system. In fact, I'm using also using a, a pair of LCR seven fifties as my width speakers in my system, um, because they totally yeah, match the um, in terms of the drivers. <laughs> and uh, eh? sorry, it is a course. I'm are. just doing some snark. <laughs> just ignore me. Um, yeah. So these are uh, these are, these incorporate the same drivers and they, and they so they have a lot of the same benefits i.e they're a really neutral speaker they're a beautifully made speaker they've got a nice curved metal um, grill I use them with the uh, v12 um, a pair of v12 MK subwoofers um, but given they've got the curved metal grill they would actually be a nice match with some of the um, I think the 3000 series SVS because they have a curved metal grill as well Um but yeah, they're, they're really well made, THX certified. They're a lovely neutral speaker, sound fantastic. Uh, I, I love them a lot. I think that for the price you're getting, which I think was yeah, it was five grand for a, a five point one system with two sorry five point two system. So that was actually you know again, it's, we're going up the price range, but you're getting a commensurately better performance. And uh, if you want the many of the benefits of the S one fifty without having to pay uh, double the amount for for them, then these are definitely a great car. And also they're they're more lifestyle friendly. They look a bit prettier and they'll fit into roomies. You know, mm. they're, they're a bit smaller, so they're more they're more practical than the uh the, which the uh, which subwoofer does the system use? Is it the V12 or the V10? Yes, or? V12. The V12. The, I I I, pro, I tested it with two V12s, which were my two V12s, actually. Right, okay. <laughs> um they did offer to send me two V12s. I said, Well, you don't need to bother because that's what I've got. Uh, so that's the, the I mean they, they they're designed to be used with the, the V range as opposed to the X range, because I think you've got X12s. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, which are a lot bigger, and and that's what you'd use with the yeah. Well, certainly with the with the um, the three fifty, which is the larger, not the S one fifty. The what's the larger? Oh, I, I've up? got the uh, it's three hundreds. Yeah, three hundreds. Yeah, S three hundreds or the MP three hundreds. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's um that's the five three thousand to five thousand price range, and then the, the very high end, no money, no object, uh, the paradigm personas which I reviewed um, towards, I think, was it either towards the end of last year? Um, they, uh, this, is, this is like a 30 grand speaker package, um, but they sound phenomenal. Um, um, <laughs> you bloody well shoot. Could, <laughs> if, you, if you can get them in your room, because <laughs> they are not small and they are not light. I remember the yeah, center you speaker nearly is died. a two man lift. <laughs> <laughs> and the sub is an absolute beast. Uh, but, the, the performance is staggering um but yeah yeah I, I was i was livid when these turned up because they are so heavy <laughs> getting them in i had to call yeah. my friend up and even with two of us it was not and have easy. you um have you ever had to turn the product away steve or ed because um, it was just too too big no i've had to ring up the manufacturer and ask them to give me a hand getting out of the box um <laughs> And it's not a case of ringing up a mate because they, you know, the product was, it was back when we used to do a high end annual for a magazine and it was uh, a 26,000 pound valve amplifier. It weighed a ton. All the weight was at one end and it was absurdly fragile. <laughs> and it's like, I'm sorry, there's an element of my liability involved in this that I'm not <laughs> not really happy with so um <laughs> can an adult come and give me a hand please it didn't help at that point that my listening room was upstairs as well so um yeah that was... oh, it's only ever happened once <laughs> with me and it was uh it was back when i started reviewing tvs and it was a seven and a half ton arctic lorry that turned up outside the house and on two pallets was this gigantic uh flight case um, massive flight case and then a whole speaker system sitting on top of that in another flight case and it came from Fujitsu it was their plasma tv at the time so it was Graham Goodburn that had sent it out for review it failed to tell me just how enormous this tv and flight case we couldn't get off the lorry there was no way it was going through the, the door or coming up the stairs so yeah it's uh, it's only ever happened the once and I've been very very careful since then to make sure that people know exactly <laughs> 
what the I mean, uh, essentially I, I have an upper limit i t- if a, something weighs more than 40 kilos it's like i'm not necessarily yeah. falling over myself it's, tr- it's trying to get solo. steve to do subwoofers you well, look, the, the, the deciding factor at this point is my back and my knees. I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah. sick of ending up injured because I've had to <laughs> pump some bloody enormous sub around. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the personas are huge. They're beautifully made. Um, I mean, you, they, they aren't cheap. I'm not going to do it. 32 grand is, is a lot of money. It's the you know, price of a decent car. But, yeah. uh, decent but you get what you car. pay for. Yeah, yeah, you get what you pay for, and they are phenomenal. But um, yes, if you if you've got the money for these, I assume you have the room as well. Um, <laughs> right, uh, best TV upgrade. So slightly spurious title because I think we've done a lot. Of t- I think we reviewed a lot of TV upgrade things this year. But yeah, it, it's one of these Martin things because normally it's an innovation award, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, this yeah. Year, there hasn't been anything that fit that category. There hasn't been any innovation. <laughs> yeah. So we thought, well, what product really has stood out in terms of, of of and that's what we came up with best tv upgrade because it is for the money that you spend on it it's yeah. a fantastic for, upgrade to your for TV. 50 to 80 50 to 90 quid it is it is it is the easiest and probably the most effective upgrade you can do to your television um adding a bias light behind it uh, and in this case obviously you know it comes with everything you need to attach it if it, it powers off of the usb port and uh, you know it's a really accurate d65 light um you know, it, it's it's a really quick and easy and relatively inexpensive way to upgrade your TV, and you will have a more comfortable viewing experience. You also probably will have, um, depending on the TV you've got, have a, a better perceived contrast ratio, particularly with if it's an LCD television. Um, it's it's yeah yeah for the for the money, it is easily the the best, easiest, and cheapest upgrade you can make to your television. Right. Okay. Uh, we need a race on because we're we're yeah. Then so. High. Best, well, there's a lot in this thing. 24 products or something. <laughs> Best PVR. Uh, I'm, admittedly, I've only seen one. I've got one more at the moment, but this obviously I have to wait till next year. But the Manhattan T- T3R, which I loved. Uh, having used um, Humax boxes for a few years now and uh, having certain issues with them, particularly things like the fact that after a few years, the remote always stops working. Um, and they're pretty slow. I would, at least the ones I had were quite slow in terms of their interface. The uh, Manhattan T3R uh, is really reliable really robust responsive hasn't put a foot wrong in the time i've had it and uh i really like it um there are a few firmware there's a few up, updates coming which will add to some more features but i've got to say that it does what it says on a tin and i've been very happy with it so that's my choice uh then we're moving on to power amp this was you phil um so quickly uh yeah um 11 channels so built solid uh, really good. Co- I mean, anything from Yamaha is really well built. Um, it has the same five feet design. Um, I forget what they call it now. There's a name for it, but yeah. they have the five feet design. ART or something like that. Something it? like that, yeah. Um, which means that it, you know it's it stops resonance uh, basically. Um, it gives it a, a good foundation. It's a fifth foot. <laughs> it's a fifth foot, yeah, basically in the middle. Um, really well built. Uh, XLR and um, RCA inputs uh, there's triggers there there's everything you need basically and it's 11 channels and there's only two 11 channel power amps on the market uh, as we speak um, and this is the one that we decided was the better of the two so uh, so there you go and then Good. matching that there's the is a processor so yeah. for under five grand um, the 5200 is an absolute crack in processor I've reviewed a couple now I did the 5200 I did the 50 was it the 5000 was the it's original 5, 000, one yeah, yeah. um solid uh, everything that you expect from a yamaha avr just without the amplification stage um xlr outs for connecting up to the power amp uh, surround ai um all the codecs that you want it doesn't do um order 3d but uh, there's 9.4 or 3D, so that's not really a great loss. It does Dolby Atmos and DTSX. Um, the only thing I miss with Aura 3D is actually the up mixer um, mm, for stereo. It's, and so it, it's really, really good. It's, it was one of the best up mixers. But uh, yeah, it's an AV processor, absolutely spot on. Feature packed, everything you'd expect from Yamaha. And added to the power amp, it's a great package. Uh, under, I think if you add two of them together, I think it comes under five grand. So yeah, absolutely spot on. And then again, it's you, um, MP4. Well, actually, Martin Gillespie uh, plus Yamaha's 
crappy room. That's the only thing that they need to fix is the room correction yeah. system. Um, if they were to go with Dirac, I think it would be it, it. It would obviously have to go up in price, but I certainly think uh, it would it would be a, a game changer at that level of the market if they did that. Right, Steve. It's you again, Lingdorf MP40. Oh yeah, MP40. Go buy one if you can afford it. And you want a separate system. Yeah, and you only need three HDMI in. Oh, yeah. three what, what HDMI really? in. <laughs> but if you need four HDMI in. 200 I mean... pages about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, it depends where you are on the fence. It, I, I mean, it, they could have had more HDMI inputs. I don't think it would have cost that much. But then again, you, you know, you're not talking about a Yamaha or a Denon here. You're talking about Lingdorf. And I don't know what, it would cost them to to have the boards developed for their processor and so on. It could be expensive. It could be cheap. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Um, but yes, it's only got, got to three. Say, personally, three would be sufficient for me. I've and three, three, three works in fine. In, 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 <laughs> yeah, in my home cinema, it works fine as well. But I understand it's not always going to be used. In we a, we in were a treated to people cinema. reeling off quite magnificent lists of things that they're connecting to their yeah, television. Yeah. I, I want Go no less you. than 12. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I appreciate that that certain people would want more. And yes, at eight and a half thousand pounds, um, it might seem stingy. But I think the, the point that was being missed was that this is actually a twelve thousand pound processor where they've taken bits and pieces out to get the price down to eight and a half thousand. It is exactly the same performance as the twelve thousand pound MP60. Uh, you're getting the same audio performance. You're getting the same features. You're getting room you're getting perfect. S- room perfect you're getting a slightly less decoding channels but do you need more than 12 well if you do then you're going to have to go up to the 60 you get more hdmis on the 60 um but yeah uh, for the money and the performance level and the fact that lingdorf have looked at their flagship and thought well you know what for those that actually don't need the flagship we can bring the same performance down to a, a more reasonable price point by making a few changes I think it's a cracking product. I, I really don't want to give it back. I mean, it is going back in January. Once I've done a couple of other processor reviews, I'm going to benchmark it. But it's a, it's an absolutely cracking piece of audio kit. And the thing is, it's probably the best musical processor I've ever had. It does two-channel fantastic. It, it really is a fantastic. It, it, I mean, it possibly helps. I mean, that's Lingdorf's original. Of course it is. It's, of, that's their, that's their yeah. background. And, yeah, um, you know, as I say, it's one of those things we, we, we do, you guys do amazing television reviews where you can say to within an nth of a percent what it gets to against a benchmark reference. You cannot accurately measure joy, but some products deliver it from the moment you turn them on and some of them don't. And if it delivers it, you then it's one of those things where if you're looking at board specs and going, well, that doesn't make any sense. Often it's one of those things where you actually sit down and spend some time with it. And you'll find a way to live with it. Yeah, is is, is the sim is the simple case on that. So uh, you know I, that my, a lot of the two channel reviews are riddled with that. You guys you guys get off easily on that. So uh, you know, take it that way you will. <laughs> uh, well, in terms of high end processor, it's the MP60. Uh, so everything Phil's just said, I, I but with, with more channels and HDMI, more yeah. HDMI <laughs> channels, more HDMI inputs. But yeah, it, it, Room Perfect is awesome. Uh, it does an amazing job, and it's so easy to use. Yeah. Um, you don't have to fanny around with, with graphs or, you know, or trying to fit curves or anything like that. And, and I, I enjoy that side of it as well. So I quite like, right. Yeah. Well, there, I there, quite like Dirac and I like the way that you can go in and you can. I like seeing the measurement of the room. And, <laughs> and, and, and you can, you can download other people's filters and try them out and so on. So I, if you're a nerd and you like playing about with stuff like that, then yeah, I, I quite enjoy uh, playing about with Dirac, but for just take a few measurements get 100% room knowledge, and it just works. And I don't know how happens. they do it. You know, they're, they're very coy when you start getting technical and well, asking it's, questions. It's, it's all it's their IP. Yeah, you know, it's so. absolutely. Yeah. And they've been doing it. It's 20 years they've been developing this. So, you know, it's, yeah. not, it's not like they were, they were doing the first room correction before I think anybody else was. Yes, so. and it wasn't. Um, it, I remember that some of the very early ones where it was like, I'm going to be polite about this because you clearly just started. Um, but the phase where I was being artificially polite to being, actually, there are some benefits to that was commendably short. By about 2006, they had the basics nailed. So you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's deeply impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and finally, AVRs. So um, 
under two grand, as I said, we haven't seen anything under a thousand, so it's, this is a bit limited. But the Marantz SR7015 is, is a fantastic uh, AVR, um, does pretty much everything Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, Auto 3D. Uh, the only thing missing really is, is a tuner. Uh, so it's actually an AV amplifier, not an AV receiver. Um, but it's a cracking performer. Um, it's, it's got every, all the benefits you'd expect and, and the performance features you'd expect from, from a Rantz. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue at the moment with the HDMI ports, uh, the 4K, sorry, 4K 120p and 8K pass through, but I'm, I have no doubt that Morantz will sort that out one way or the other. Um, then, oh, you again, Phil. So 2000 to 4000 price range, we've got the NAD T778. I absolutely adore the NAD. It's got its faults, um, which they are working through. Uh, there, there's just little niggles, like when you switch it on, there's a, a little pop that you can hear through the speakers and and so on. And, and sometimes it switches itself off for no good reason than just switching itself off. Although it only did that a couple of times with me. And once the firmware was updated, it never did it again. But what I do like is the digital amplification. Now, this does divide people. Um, a lot of people prefer AB or G class or whatever. But um, it, for the size that it is, it's powerful. Um, they are pretty honest in terms of uh, what they specify in terms of power and what they can drive and so on. And it comes with Dirac uh, room correction. It does Dolby Atmos and DTSX. The game changer is the TFT color display on the front touch panel. You can get into all the menus and everything, which is great if you have a cinema room that you also want to listen to music in because you don't have to switch the projector on um, or you don't have to switch any display on. You can access yeah. everything, including streaming through the uh, the TFT display at the front. Um, that's a real game changer. Design-wise, it looks gorgeous. Uh, the build quality is fantastic. Um, again, it, not a huge amount of HDMIs, but more than the Lingdorf, but... Um, what they do is they do what's called the uh, modular design concept. So basically, if you look at the rear, um, there are panels that can be removed and you can remove, say, the HDMI 2.0B ports and replace them with HDMI 2.1 if they ever um, introduce that. So in terms of its modular design, um, you can upgrade it as well if it's if you're able to you know, take a module out and put a new module in and so on. But what I loved was the room connection software mixed with the, the powerful digital amplification and the fact that it sounds gorgeous. It really does. I really like the NAD sound. Um, and uh, again, it was another product I was sad to see go. And I think it's worth every penny of the two and a half. Grand. There is just one other thing I'll throw in. I, I, I didn't mention this. As you know, I spent 18 months living in a shed with a pay-as-you-go electricity meter. <laughs> Um, we are being encouraged to be greener and more energy efficient. NAD's amplification is extraordinarily efficient. I mean, all AV receivers are fundamentally a big current draw. Um, yeah. But um, I've just been doing, I've got another NAD product here. It's only two channels, but uh, I've got, you know, I've got smart metering and I've got some other things. It is unbelievably efficient compared to the, the vast majority of you know electricity chewing monsters that that turn up if you are you know if you are mindful of these things the nad gets more done on a given quantity of input voltage than almost any of its rivals it's yeah that, that's what really impressive. impressed me it really did impress me and i believe the the you know the specifications when they say you know, all channels driven I, I believe that because the performance is there. So yeah, cracking product. Yes, it is a cracking product. And then I've picked from sort of four grand to ten grand price range uh, the Arkham AVR thirty. Now I know there's been a lot of bugs with this uh, AVR, but from a purely as a nine point one point six channel system uh, with Atmos and, and DTSX and IMAX enhanced. Uh, I thought it sounded amazing. Um, and, and when I was testing it uh, in my system, running 9.1.6 with direct room correction, it was awesome. Um, it gave me some of the most, I mean, you know, considering I'm putting it up against the Lindorf, which is three, four times the price. No, three times the price. Uh, you know, it was holding its own. So yes, it's had a few teething problems, uh, which I'm sure uh, Arcan will eventually sort everything out. But in my experience, as, a, as an AVR for watching movies, and I'm not talking about streaming music here, which is where I think where a lot of the problems lie, but for watching movies, uh, it, it absolutely knocked it out of the park for me. So that's my choice. Uh, and then finally, um, 
Focal and their um, Astral 16, which is a rebadged Storm Audio um, processor with um, 12 channels of built-in amplification, but it can process 16 channels, hence the name. Uh, again, Atmos, DTSX, and Auro 3D. Uh, I thought it was an absolutely superb. Um, I, I think it's, it's actually an AV amplifier. It hasn't got a built-in uh, tuner. So it's, it's an AV amplifier. But yeah, in terms of its performance as a, the, the processor, the quality of the processor, again, uses Direct Live. Um, and uh, it was absolutely cracking. And, and the amplification was superb as well, really powerful. And uh, even with just you know, even even the twelve channels, which I think at the time I didn't have, I didn't have the ability to run sixteen channels when I tested it, so I did run the twelve, um, and it was awesome. So, but it isn't cheap. It's uh, it's like twenty grand. Um, it's so only money. That, you can't take. Bear it that in mind. I mean, you know, at twenty grand, <laughs> I'd be thinking Lindor yeah. for the Emotiva would you, be a better you, option. <laughs> you even forums people are dead posh. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's all twenty-four home AV products. That took yeah. ages to. I just it, it, it might <laughs> be fair to say that we, we're only we're only posh in specific areas. There, there, there's um there's I'm just trying to work it out. There's there's, there's forty eight thousand pounds worth of audio equipment in front of me, but I do have a cupboard full of pot noodles. So. <laughs> it's all cables, <laughs> not all of it, not all of it, yeah. some yeah. quite a bit. Well, thanks for that, Steve. Um, very very quickly, JVC firmware came out. Um, we've both updated the projector, so I've got the JVC N5. You got the N7. I haven't had a chance to put a meter in front of it. Have you? I've, no. I've just, I've um, just played around with it and watched. You just played. That's what I've done. I watched. I watched uh, Mandalorian. Played around with it. it. It's impressive what it does. The uh, theater optimizer is is interesting. But I want to see what it's doing to the uh, ST2084 curve because it's it's adding a hell of a lot of brightness back to the image. Um, and it seems to be doing an S curve uh, or certainly an old S curve um, effect to that. So I'd be in, I'll be interested to put the meter on and just see what exactly it is doing. But in terms of performance, um, I think it, <laughs> it's impressive. Really? It it's impressive. It's not, it's not like it was bad before the new firmware. No, no, no. It's really no, no. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the theater optimizer, the idea is that you input the d diagonal screen size yeah. of a 16 to 9 screen. So if you've got a scope ratio screen, then you calculate the 16 to 9 yeah. image that it's projecting and, and work out what the diagonal is. You put that in, you put in your screen gain, whatever that is. You can put in the code for your particular screen material. A projector knows what the bulb life is. It knows what the throw is, and it applies this. Now, I can't. I've got to say, I can't see a massive difference, but I think it is. It's subtle, but I think there's, the highlights are a bit better. The, the shadows are a bit better. It's 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 subtle, but it, it looks incredible. Um, the one thing I will point, it's, it's got a low, mid, and high setting. Mid's the default. Depending on the disc, I've had to swap between mid and high because um, some discs, and, and I'm looking at you, Disney and Fox, you know, um, they don't put in, they just put in like zero for black, thousand nits or whatever it's coded at, and that's it. There's no average number. Um, so the projector's got less information to work with. So sometimes hitting the, using the high high setting uh, works better because it looks a bit dim otherwise. Um, but otherwise, uh, I also noticed that if you turn off theater optimizer and use the old auto setting for frame adapt, that looks a lot darker than it did before. Um, so I'm not sure what they've been doing there, but but it's yeah it's an interesting feature and certainly from what I've seen so far it performs really really well. Yeah, um, no, I, I was they've... quite quite happy with the image quality. It's just my curiosity is yeah. is, is getting the better of me. It's like well how how are you doing it and what exactly are you doing, um, especially in the high because it, there is a jump in brightness definitely a, a jump in brightness and dynamic range. So I want to know exactly what they're doing with that. Um, so yeah, just from a curiosity point of view, I think we're going to have to put a meet up and just see exactly what it is doing. And um, they've also added, they've changed the layout of the, uh, and I know people have been complaining because one of the things is now when you change aspect ratio, it takes longer. Do you notice that, Phil? Yes, it does. It's about, it takes about 15 seconds now. Um, because obviously it's got to reprocess all the information and people have been complaining about that. It's like, well, come on, it's just a few more seconds. It's not the end of the world. I, uh, I it was the first thing when I, I first did, did it. Though. I panicked because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, what's going on here?" And then I realised it just took a bit longer because now it's not just changing aspect ratio; it's also loading in screen size and the the gain and everything, and it's having to reprocess and recalculate all the information yeah. to apply to HDR content. Yeah, and the, I, do uh, like, I do like the way that it applies your settings as well. So if it's SDR content, it'll apply your SDR calibration. If it's you HDR, can, you can it set, yeah, you it. can select either previous 
set, setting it's used or you can actually apply it so for sdr you can i've got natural setting i presume it's what you're using as well and then i've created a 3d setting so when it's a 3d signal it goes to the 3d setting i've created and then for the hdr it will go to frame adapt and then for hlg it goes yeah. to hlg if you've got hlg i don't really have any hlg sources but um, that works i did test it out with with sdr 3d and hdr so that works fine uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, as I think we've said on previous podcasts, the main thing is that they're still supporting the existing range. And it's free. Um, and it's free, yeah. So I'm delighted. <laughs> <laughs> free asterisk with the purchase yeah. of every project. <laughs> yeah, so well, we've got, you've got to you know, <laughs> buy the projector. But yeah, after that, the fact that, the, and we've, we've said this a number of times on the podcast, you know, why do manufacturers have to change the, uh, the product every year? Well, JVC are proving the point here. You don't have to do that support the product, keep the firmware coming up, improve it in, in, in small amounts every year, and uh, you've got a really happy customer base, and they still can't hold them in stock. And they're still so. selling everyone they can buy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got a backlog, I think. Uh, there's a, I think partly it's, it's supply issues because of COVID. But, uh, but yeah. uh, well, this is the other thing. There was some right at the start of people complaining, uh, complaining, commenting that Black Friday deals this year aren't that great uh we're coming off the back of one of the most extraordinary phases of av sales that we've had in ever uh so no the impetus to discount whilst people are still stuck at home and going hmm, i think i'll improve my sitting on the sofa experience and I'm, I'm sorry guys black friday cyber monday this year realistically is it's, it's never of, been it's never been great anyway but, uh, no but it's something of a it's something of a non-event because yeah. there's there's um i, I do consultancy and support work for a couple of companies um and uh we're, we're, we're backed up there's you know ev yeah. everything that can be made is going out the door and fulfilling orders it's yeah. not there's no, nothing is being built on a speculative basis at the moment so. uh, gustavo asks how does a jvc compare to the new sony 4k as well just for you gustavo um steve has the n7 projector jvc and next week he will be getting the, is it the 790, 790. from Sony? And I've got the N5, and I'll be getting the 590 next week for two weeks. So we shall be comparing them, and we'll let you know uh, how we get on with that, With obviously with the reviews. And we're hoping that next week's podcast we'll have Chris from Sony Professional on to talk about the new projectors as well. So uh, that hasn't been confirmed yet, but hopefully he will be here next so week. So sit poised in front yes. of your laptop. For but we knew, you, <laughs> we knew you were going to ask that question, so we were ahead, well ahead of you there. We'd already organised um, all that. There's a quick question from Martin Gillespie. He did donate uh, two euros at the start of this podcast. So uh, it's for you, Ed, I think. Uh, well, I've been all Phil, of it, but... I think. What, what, what can one mix power amps for four ohm and eight ohm speakers? Oh, um, for instance, five four ohm Arundels and four eight ohm Atmos speakers. If you've got enough channels to do it, then yes. And there's provided the amps rated four to eight ohms, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Mm -hmm. It's only when you start doing stuff like I'd like to put six Apogee scintillas on it that you know things bad things will happen. If the amp is rated from four to eight ohms, um, unless they they specifically say that the channels are in any way linked and most multi-channel power amplifiers are not it should make no difference whatsoever i thought he was asking about the uh the nad av receiver does it only have one sub out phil will know this uh i only used one sub out i can't remember i, I think <laughs> it does I, I, yeah, I can't remember top of my head I can't remember off the top of my head. Look, I'll go and, look at I'll, the review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a photograph of the rear. Go and have a look. Um, it, and I, that was like four or five weeks ago. In fact, it was probably longer than that. And uh, <laughs> a lot of water's passed under the bridge since then. So I, really what I was doing that. yesterday, to be yeah, honest. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, right, so we're going to do Ed's music thing. And, and that leaves us with about six minutes for movies. So we'll be going to software next. Th thanks for coming along. Okay, so you need to be quick uh, with this, be, thing, Ed. So your album of the week, I've listened to it. I think it's uh, two thumbs up from me. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, right, I'm going to annoy someone from Wales because I never pronounce it correctly. It's by a group called Stats, um, and it's Powers, Powers, the Powers. Welsh Powers. Yeah, the Welsh town, 1999. Uh, I'll be brief. It's music to crash your hot hatch to. That's the only description <laughs> I can give to it. It's it, it, it is 1999, but just gently rejigged. Um, an 
absolute joyous yeah. blast of an album. Um, and the uh, lady involved in it is uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's younger sister, I believe, just by, just, just to, just demonstrate that that's an absurdly and sickeningly talented family yeah. um so yeah there you are um well worth a look on all the streaming services it uh you, we've linked to the band camp thing so if you want to buy it on cd or physical media if you buy it through band camp it's a reminder that they get all of the money from you doing so um support artists don't support jeff bezos um take it from there um that's me done there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to mention a quick one as well, because um, I just think it's absolute pure cheese and it's kept me happy uh, for the last two weeks. And that's Kylie's new album, Disco. I just think it's absolutely. It's got moments of brilliance. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a consistent. I don't think it's a consistent. It just brilliant. makes me absolutely happy. It's it's kept me in high spirits and I love Kylie. I won't hear a word against her. So that's my uh, recommendation. If you like, Old school disco mixed with uh, electronics. That's great. Right, Kaz. Uh, you've, you've got, got five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we, you're off. <laughs> we shall be running over this evening. It's, but yes, uh, film review time. It's been an interesting time because I've had uh, access to more, perhaps more reviews in-house than, than I have during the whole of lockdown. Um, I've got a number of 4Ks. I've got Tremors, 4K from Arrow, which after King in New York, York looks great so i've only just started it uh got cinema parody so and again i only started it but it looks tremendous so far um both arrow releases total, they total look recall. great i've got total recall which i have finished and that was a glorious watch i really enjoyed yeah, I that presumably that. the so, special some of the special effects looked a bit awkward oh obviously the you know they they it's a bit like back to the future you know some yeah. of the mounted effects they don't look good but they only show you how good the rest has cleaned up. I mean, Mars, anything Mars related looks fantastic. Um, it's a it's a really, really tremendous job that they've done with that. Um, I really enjoyed revisiting Total Recall. I think it's it's one of my favorite Arnie's. I mean, I know that's not hard, but it's one of my favorite. Like, it's, it, I always think it gets a bum rap compared to Terminator Two and stuff like that. I think it's it's in some in some ways I prefer it. It's a magnificent it's a brilliant place. film, except it for is... the fact that you know you're supposed to believe this guy is you know an well, average no, Joe, an average guy, <laughs> yeah. and he's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is interesting, and his his acting is is. Typical Arnie, but yeah, uh, I would love to have seen the original. This was supposed to be originally made by David Cronenberg. It uh, was with yeah. Richard Dreyfus in the part of, of Quaid, and that <laughs> would have been that would have been a fascinating. It, film. A different film. It's very well, different. Film. Well, the the <laughs> I mean the 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 whole the whole story uh, is a bit more of a downer. It's originally Philip K. Dick, isn't it? Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. I've read the original and, story, yeah, which is quite the, different from the film. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so 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 obviously they went. Hey, we've got Arnie. We're not going to end it like we do the book. Well, no, the thing we, is, though, if you listen to the commentary track, it's really funny because um, Paul Verhoeven, you know, is basically explaining that at the end of the film, Quaid is lobotomized, and that's why it fades to white. And Arnold's having none of it. He's going, yeah, "No, yeah. it's happy ending. I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I saved Mars. I, you know." And he's like, "No, no, no, Arnold. That's not what happens at the end." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely think you, you could argue that that was the ending, like what what Verhoeven's saying. But he's done it so subtly that I can see him getting. Does it subtly so that, you can have either way? Yeah. But, and and that basically all of Arnie's fans at the time would have done a had a riot. You know, imagine seeing him in Predator. Yeah. And, and some of them are on steroids, so you didn't yeah, want to yeah, riot. So, <laughs> so I've had some good stuff in, and on on uh, on new digital releases, I, I've had access to, as I said, Nicolas Cage's latest, which I haven't quite got around to, and <laughs> oh. uh, a film called Alone, which no one will have heard of. It's by John Hyams. He, he's the son of Peter Himes, and uh, he did the latest Universal Soldier sequels, which are actually really good. And it's getting rave reviews. It's just a, you know, a, a survival thriller, um, but it, it looks really good. I've had access to a lot of things, and I've also had uh, Gerard Butler's latest disaster movie, and I couldn't help but... 
Check, Check it out. needs to get a now, new a new look, agent. He yeah, really does. <laughs> look, you know what? You say that. You say that, Steve. He's done a film called Geostorm, which you yeah, I know. Seen, yeah, <laughs> and because of Geostorm, he's done another disaster flick with a G. I mean, I, I reckon like Segal did three word titles. Gerard Butler should do all films with G. So everything <laughs> from now on should be G related. So he's he's done he's done Geostorm, and everyone's going to write this off. It's tremendous. It's really good. It's called Greenland. It's basically um, monsters without the monsters. It's a, more of an indie flick. I'm not really selling this, I've got to say. It's re- it is really good. I want the monsters. <laughs> no, mo- like monster style. So doing a lot with very little, you know, like uh, more character driven. Is it set in and... Greenland? No. And um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's Jared Butler and he's, uh, he's faced with uh, a comet, which is, Gonna cause some trouble on the planet, and it's a, uh, it's it's really as nice opposed to, to those those often seen benign comets. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think? I mean, you know that that's what everybody thinks of comets, but only in movies do they actually do this stuff. I mean, it's proper, it's well, proper no, no, dinosaur no, 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 time. No, com- comets, comets are fine when they're 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 buzzing around outside. Any comet strike into into a planetary body is um, trouble. Yeah, sure. Game so, over. I mean, just look at Tunguska in nineteen. Whatever it was, twelve. Well, that, that was dinky. I mean, when um, yeah, it's a small thing, but it's still flattened a massive part of <laughs> but no, Siberia. I mean, sh- when um, they NASA crunched the numbers from was it Shoemaker Nine hitting um Jupiter, it was um, I mean, it was astronomical. It was it was all the atomic yes, weapons we've, the planet. we've ever made. Eating into through. my five minutes here, guys. Come on, all right, all come right. on. So um, it's really good. It's Summer Butler's best work. It's nothing like Geostorm. It makes that's not saying a lot, though. Is it some of no, I mean, best it's, work? Not a, it's not a big budget blockbuster, and actually, it's it does it a disservice by having it. What's the what's the score, Kaz? And I'll see if I agree with you, even though I haven't seen the film. I give it an eight. But how do we watch it? It's never an eight, mate. It's never, <laughs> yeah. how could you give it an eight? Kaz, how do we give watch it? An eight. It? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to wait on for Amazon. Right, I okay. think it's. Uh, I think they're looking at the 18th of December. STX released it in America. It's going to go oh, in the cinemas they're here. They're releasing it for we my had, birthday. We yeah. had a lockdown. I mean, I think it's uh, mid December on Amazon. So, I mean, people don't have to worry about figuring it out a different way. I mean, it, it, you should give it a chance. Don't expect it to be a conventional disaster flick. It's not day after tomorrow. Uh, so that might put some. You people say it like that's a bad thing. No, I'm it sorry, is, it isn't. But it's not geostorm. <laughs> if you if you're expecting geostorm, you might actually All be right. disappointed because it's it's more about the characters. Uh, but I, but you I don't really don't really... diss the day after tomorrow on a on on cold winter days. I'm sorry, there is no <laughs> better film to watch on Saturday afternoon than after tomorrow. I just Absolutely can't handle the bit where they get trapped in that flooding room. What? No, I'm not gonna. I, I now believe that logic, though, because before I'd been to New York, I couldn't believe the logic of going at the library. But now I've been there, I know that it is actually on high ground. So. You're absolutely <laughs> all in. All out in. I'm, it's I'm it's like a documentary. In <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. Well, it, it's based on a true story, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, right, a- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I was going to also mention, which you've already, already covered done. earlier on. I finished it. It's tremendous. It's sad to see them go. Um, and I wanted how to many out, how so many seasons is it? Seven seasons. Seven. seven all on Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah. So I think that's great because actually I used to watch them on was it Channel Four? Something? Oh no! I mean that's the one thing I will say. The picture quality now is superb compared yeah. to what I was watching on E4. I mean, yeah, I used to watch it on E4, <laughs> and if you missed an episode, it was a world of pain. It was you know the catch up had adverts. It was it was a horrible way of watching it. Yeah. And uh, and then I used to get up get the disc packages, which looked really pretty, but they were very clumsy, like to put on your shelf because they're in these lavish little box sets. Um, it's really nice having it all on Disney, and I've loved finishing it. I ploughed through it, just got better and better, and then I I didn't want it to end. Um, okay. And I, I wanted to shout out for Andy. Andy's coming soon's. They inform me of a lot of stuff that I hadn't actually picked up on. I think they inform most people. Yeah, yeah they're, <laughs> they're very they're, good. Well, I mean, they're, they're really good. But I mean, I normally know of a lot of these things ahead of schedule. But then when I come across stuff he's mentioned, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah. about that. But it's usually Netflix where he 
where he reveals little gems like this weekend I watched Sorry to Bother You, which was great. And yes. also Assassination Nation, which was really good too. Yes, yeah, that's really good, yes. I was watching that thinking, like, this really reminds me of Euphoria. Then I realised it was the same guy. Yeah, <laughs> I really, so I really, I did enjoy Assassination Nation. It's probably yeah. why I gave Euphoria a chance, because I watched that first. But, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to Clooney's Midnight Sky on Netflix and uh, Sound of Metal on and Amazon. Pinchers new film, 4th of December. Yes, I am looking forward to that. I'm, I, I mean, I don't know what to make of it. Um, it, it looks Fincher. really good. It is Fincher. It is, it is Fincher. Gary Oldman. It is Oldman, yes. Um, I, I think my biggest problem is I'm not... It, it's been like a while since I saw Citizen Kane. So the idea of watching... <laughs> it's about a sled. Double bill. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's going to be problematic, isn't it? But anyway, yes, there's that. There we go. Boom. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was actually genuinely impressive, Kirst. Do you want to go off yeah. at length about just something random? Yeah, but now, <laughs> now, now that we know that you uh, you can do it in five minutes, we'll yeah, just five minutes. That's it. <laughs> 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 oh, I um, pedaling through it. Yeah. So uh, um, it was announced today, um, if you like car stuff that me and Ed like, uh, the Grand Tour is coming back for the 18th of December yes. on uh, Amazon Prime. It's so obviously it looks, again my birthday. That's how it's yeah. how it happens. You know, well, that's it. Happens. Everything everything good happens. Everything's for my birthday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Grand Tour's coming back. I'm not sure how it's going to work this time around because it's it's basically just one of these big challenge things. But that's that they did say that was that that those are all of what the remainders are going to be. They have seeded um, the actual business of reviewing cars to YouTube and Top Gear. And yeah. to be honest, let's be honest here. If you want to talk about cylinder firing orders and things like that, YouTube owns that now. I've, I've got to say, I've discovered a few things on YouTube recently, and I quickly wanted to raise it. If you are like me and Ed and into, into cars, um, Johnny Smith, you remember Johnny Smith yes. from Fifth Gear and so on. Proper... Uh, automotive journalist and the thing is with youtube is there's too many uh, people YouTubers playing at it playing at it and they can't even drive so things like supercar of london that guy cannot drive a car um he's the worst driver i've ever seen and he's driving around in lamborghinis and so on and then you've got other people like shmi 150 who oh which supercar am i going to buy this week it's not reality you just it, you know it's it's interesting from a certain point of view, but then you get to points where you just think, no, that's that's not working well. Johnny Smith, he does uh, the late break show, um, and it's a good mix because it's not because for a long time he did a lot of EV stuff, electric vehicles. It's not; it's a good mix of um, ice and EV. Um, he's got a really natural way of presenting things. He did a fantastic interview, two part interview with Chris Harris. Recently, that was excellent, genuinely um, excellent, which was really, really good. Well worth watching. And, um, you know, Harris and him go back a long, long way. Cause they're both, uh, journalists from way back. The other thing is Harry's garage. I've, I've fallen in love with Harry's garage and Harry uh, Metcalf. He's the guy that founded evil magazine. So again, another automotive journalist who, loves his cars and all the rest of it. So if, if you're looking for good quality content and not the usual Mr. JWW and Shmi 150 buying supercars and living the life that you ain't ever going to live, then uh, that's those two are worth watching. If you do like YouTubers, Sam Fain, who does Seen Through Glass, is probably the best. Well, the, the, uh, the, the other bunch. one I'd give a nod to because it's a totally different style. Regular car reviews from the United States. Um, if they just look at whatever randomly happens to be lying around at the moment, hence regular car reviews. Their Pontiac Aztec video is one of the single greatest pieces of situational comedy yeah. I've ever seen. It's just, it is magnificent. You'll either laugh until you prolapse or turn it off after four minutes. That, that's <laughs> how it works. So yeah, yeah there you go. We've and and if, you, if you want some stupidity as well, Hoovy's Garage, absolutely love that. Hoovy's and the Wizard. Um, he just buys shit cars. <laughs> he goes out and he buys the cheapest version of a car that he can. Um, so the cheapest Lamborghini Guard or cheapest Ferrari 308 or whatever. And they've all got problems and he takes it to his mechanic and his mechanic can afford a yacht just with the amount of money he plows into fixing these cars up. And they never they never get to be perfect. Or they're always breaking down stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, that's well worth watching as well. So I want you to mention them because I think in terms of YouTube, there is some real quality content once you get away from the influencers. 
um, yeah. and actually find genuine people that are, know what they're talking about and enthusiastic. So well worth it. And I love Hoovy's Garage. I just think it's the stupidest channel on YouTube and it's fantastic. I haven't seen an influencer yet. I didn't want to punch. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, I don't, it, 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 it's a, it, I think generationally we're going, well, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about cars, hi-fi, because there are hi-fi, hi-fi influencers. I find, I yeah. mean, they are predominant. The ones that are going to get a shoeing from me. <laughs> um, it's, it's a world, it, it, I'm going to, going to paraphrase swordfish here, the John Travolta thing. It's a world beyond our world. And, <laughs> uh, and essentially it's, it, I'm, af- I'm, I'm afraid we're too old and too confused to, 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 uh, to, to make be influenced. Yeah. And also to be influencers. I mean, it's like, look at this fat middle-aged man sat on his own. <laughs> Do what he says. <laughs> That's a guarantee of success. You know, so. <laughs> At the risk of bringing us back to AV briefly, um, Kaz, yes, is the Star Wars Lego holiday special worth watching? I was just going to ask the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, it's it's a tiny bit flabby for a short, but it's forty two minutes, and it's it's a bit like the Lego Batman movie in that if you if you knew all the Batman films, and I mean all the Batman, like right the way through to the sixties, watching the Lego Batman movie was just a feast of in-house trivia and nods to this and nods to that i mean it's like that <laughs> so so it's that for star wars they jump through time and they revisit iconic moments right. and, i watched that in bed tonight then <laughs> it's it's well it's worth 55 inch it's, a, oh, yeah. it's a tiny bit long in the middle but i think in return for that you just get more of these nods and it's it's people like you and me and phil who'll get them all and who'll love them for it so well, oh, speak, speaking of Star Wars, so what do you guys think of the Mandalorian? Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm absolutely it's loving awesome. it. it I, is like awesome. their eggs. I and, just uh, wish they were a bit longer. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know. So well, well, the thing is, they're, they're getting shorter as we go on because the first one was almost feature length, was it? Or yeah, 50 nearly, minutes. Well, nearly 50, yeah. 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was like record length for and, the and Mandalorian. They're getting shorter and shorter. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like fan service for true fans. With but, a, yeah. but I don't think you can enjoy it if you aren't a massive fan, but if you watch The Clone Wars, and yeah. rebels in particular, you're getting massively rewarded by but Dave case, case in point. Case in point, my my father has seen the three original films, and he's actually enjoying it on a yes on a uh, and and I think that's what that and ultimately, we, much as I'd like longer episodes, I'm enjoying. Uh, it, it episode of the week not yes and not yeah. over yeah. It, it, that's that's part of the magic doesn't it doesn't over- outstay it its doesn't. welcome yeah but you, exactly. you say you say he he likes the original trilogy and likes this but actually what's what i find nice about it is it i wouldn't uh, say liked kaz i mean he's seen the original <laughs> <He's> seen <him. laughs> but, essentially well, he was bemoaning it's like oh what can i actually watch in dolby vision and then, well all right, give this give this a go because well, it, it's short enough. You probably won't fall asleep in the middle of it. And, it's uh, nice know. that it doesn't completely trash the prequels either. I read yeah. one of the comments about yeah, that. I mean, nice, it, nice throwbacks. Yeah, there, there. there are. I mean, it's one of the catches at the end of the first episode is almost entirely reliant on having yeah. actually watched the prequels. Can I just and, say that um, uh, having the Mandalorian theme tune queued up on the streaming service of your choice playlist so it starts running as you just turn your car on and drive off automatically <laughs> makes driving off to the shops 8 million percent more exciting <laughs> yeah. I, 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 can I just say about the Mandalorian theme tune has been killing me this week because you know it goes yeah yes. right? well unfortunately somehow in my subconscious that morphed from that to which is the theme tune to a lower low so i've had the theme tune to a lower low in my head for the last week and it's driving me nuts that's well over to a 4k well on that bombshell yeah i think we need to wrap it up because if we go in any longer um we get cut off the beginning gets cut off of the podcast so those people who want to watch the full thing, it, it might not work for them. So we need to wrap things up. Um, lots to talk about next week as well. So do come back with it for now. We've got the podcast competition, Kaz. Yep, to win a copy of the Hardware on HMV exclusive Blu-ray steelbook Japanese artwork, blah. Just use the following question to pick the right answer from the competition page. Which one of these actors has not co-starred with Michael J. Fox in a movie? Not. How many people have got it wrong so far? Oh, you know, you ask me this question, normally I'm on the board, but I, I, 
haven't actually looked at it. If so I've got let's see 14 so. seconds, then I might actually give you an answer. We okay. don't. The answer is no. Whoa, it's bad. We're down to 18 percent. Have got it correct. Okay. Well, there you go. Get stuck. Well, there you in go. You've got a pretty good bad. <laughs> You've got a good opportunity of winning. Then, if you yeah. actually do what you're supposed to, and uh, and pick your yeah. winner. Right. So, my thanks to Ed Selly. Would it help if I got out and pushed? Kaz Hallam. Don't make me destroy you. And Steve Withers. But tell me the odds. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, then please like and subscribe. And of course, hit the notification bell for uh, when we do publish more videos and you'll be told all about them, the live streams, product reviews, and so on. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can bookmark every form for latest reviews, uh, news, and videos. And of course, leave us a five-star rating on whichever service you use that allow it to give us a rating, then do that and give us five stars. Uh, I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. <laughs>